Hello and welcome to Community Connection. I'm Iowa City Mayor Bruce Teague. Our community is facing multiple challenges right now, from the pandemic to the Black Lives Matter movement. I host this program to highlight how our community is coming together to address these obstacles. Due to COVID-19, many events are being canceled or postponed, but some organizations are moving programming online instead. That's the case for the African American Museum of Iowa, who is hosting a virtual Juneteenth celebration. Here to discuss that event as well as the Black Lives Matter movement is Executive Director Lanisha Cassell. Thanks for joining me. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. I'm doing well, thank you, and I appreciate the opportunity to be able to be with you today. Yes, well, we have lots going on in our community right now uh, with Black Lives Matter, and I know how important that is to the, uh, to the museum. That's what you all stand for. Can you talk a little bit about the museum and how you all are doing right now with Black Lives Matter? Sure, thank you. You know, um, interestingly enough, you know, we've been closed, of course, to the public because of COVID issues and been working remotely and just trying to adapt our programming and, and so forth for our audiences. And, you know, right now, um, you know, we've been uh, using this opportunity to really uh, demonstrate to our public, to the community, to the entire state of Iowa and beyond um, that we are here to not just uh, share historical facts, but also to teach, um, educate about um, our history uh, so that people will be able to better understand why we are where we are today. And, um, you know, people have been very receptive and um, encouraging in that way. And we know that everything that's been happening uh, after the murder of Mr. Floyd was not just because of him, but because of all of the injustices that have happened uh, over the course of our nation's history to black people, people of color, and, and other oppressed groups. So uh, we definitely are um, in a position uniquely to be able to um, have those conversations and be a platform uh, for social justice um, and the movement that we're experiencing right now. Yes, well, I, I, I think you've said it best about um, all that's going on in our community. I, I so appreciate the African American Museum because the history that you all possess is very rich. And, and sometimes you have different displays that switch in and switch out. And so mm -hmm. it, it gives us a continuum of aspects that many people are saying is missing within our community and within our school and history books. And so thanks for it, uh, being a part of that mission uh, to bring African-American to life here, or blacks in general, is not limited just to African-Americans, but uh, blacks in general. So thank you for that. Um, Absolutely. Yes. And we Absolutely. talked about we COVID. That. Yes. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So in light of COVID-19 and Juneteenth, so mm -hmm. we know that a lot of events have been canceled throughout, uh, the, commu uh, throughout the nation and within our state. But I, Juneteenth sometimes get mixed up with being the Emancipation Proclamation. And can you tell us what Juneteenth is within, um, within our history? Yes, I'm glad you asked that question actually, because we do hear that a lot. Um, it is commonly known as African-American or Black uh, freedom um, celebration as well. But the Emancipation Proclamation was issued in 1863, and it took two years for all slaves to be notified uh, that they were free. Um, and in Galveston, Texas in 1865, the final uh, slaves were informed about their freedom. And so June 19th to be exact. And so since June 19th, 1865, uh, this recognition or ceremony celebration has been recognized. Uh, so it's a, a very uh, rich history uh, that we find ourselves being able to uh, acknowledge and, and celebrate uh, you know, on Juneteenth, which again is June 19th and the museum will be celebrating it virtually uh, for an entire week, June 15th through June 20th. And so we're excited to be able to um, not only share history and share uh, what Juneteenth is about, but also to share uh, strides and also to showcase some of the struggle. I think there's a lot of effort put into uh, showcasing African-American or black resilience, but we also have to share the, the struggle that's happened and the struggle that still continues to happen today. So we'll be doing that throughout the entire week. Well, I'm happy to hear that because uh, there won't be any in-person 
celebrations as I've been to in attendance in the in the past, both here in Iowa City and in Cedar Rapids. So what does some of those programs look like that you're putting on? Because it, it is a challenge to kind of uh, still get that feeling, in, in-person feeling that I've had mm-hmm. when att- yes. attending some of these. And so if you can talk a little bit about what that looks like and um, mm-hmm. what, what your hopes are, because I'm still happy that we will have celebrations virtually for Juneteenth. We're very excited. You know, um, I have to give credit to our entire team here at the museum um, for uh, adapting right away, um, right after we were um, beginning to see the impact of COVID-19 and some of the, and the closures began to happen, we immediately thought we needed to, to begin adapting our programs uh, to virtual and digital formats. And so we've seen success um, that way. And so we made a decision pretty early, uh, maybe mid-April, to, to do a virtual celebration because we know what it takes to put on programming. Um, and it's a little bit more complex when you're trying to juggle all the pieces for a program uh, at an event of this magnitude. And we wanted it to be a quality program. So we wanted to give our sponsors and our performing, performers and all the people who were involved in our uh, programming to have chance to uh, pre-record, get their, uh, get their pieces together. And so I did also want to mention before I get into some of the actual programming events, our sponsors for the event, which include, of course, the city of Iowa City, but our sponsors and, uh, and community partners also include Align Energy, uh, Collins Community Credit Union, the Cedar Rapids Civil Rights Commission, the Marion Civil Rights Commission, and also uh, Johnson County, in addition to the, Iowa, to the city of Iowa City. So we're really grateful for those partnerships and that they did not um, choose to pull away, but they embraced um, our decision to go virtual uh, for a week-long celebration versus the one-day in-person event. So we're going to be having um, pre-recorded sponsor remarks, which will be really great. Our sponsors really embraced this idea and they um, were excited to be able to um, showcase their um, uh, embracing of this initiative by doing uh, recorded remarks. We're also gonna have uh, stage performances that are emceed. Uh, so we have singers and uh, dancers. Uh, we'll have um, how-to videos, we'll have demonstration videos. Uh, there'll be a lot of exciting things happening. And as we um, talk about relating to uh, what's happening right now with um, protesting, you know, we'd already had most of our uh, plans underway before this happened. And so we really still wanted to include um, and be conscious about where people are right now. So we um, invited um, world-renowned opera singer and, and Cedar Rapids native, Iowa native, I'm sorry, Iowa native, who's uh, native to Centerville, Iowa, uh, Dr. Simon Estes, to uh, recite uh, Dr. King's speech entitled The Other America, which has been quoted a lot recently and, and in the past as well, but in particular, I've seen it a lot on social media platforms. Um, it was uh, the line that it was particularly um, uh, famous and utilized right now is a riot is the language of the unheard. And so we were really grateful when we approached Dr. Estes about reciting uh, a portion of that speech that he said yes, um, and he wholeheartedly got on board and has already done his uh, recording. So we'll be releasing that as part of our celebration um, that week as well. That's pretty uh, powerful. Yeah, I'm sorry. We're, we're, no, that, that's pretty powerful when you uh, have that mm-hmm. one-liner, a riot is mm-hmm. the voice of the unheard. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that Absolutely. in itself, it, it says a lot about the temperature that's happening through some of the protesters where for, for over 400 years where we have been fighting and fighting um, w- without a voice, um, and mm-hmm. and that line talks could could attribute to why some people do some of the things that is undesirable, um, you know. Mm-hmm. But it it could be seen as their voice and a way to be reached um, to get their message to the greater of the community. Mm-hmm. Uh, the challenge becomes: do the do, does the community really hear it? Um, you know, yeah. that, that full intent. And that's something that'll play itself out. But I believe that Juneteenth and the events that you're having right now, uh, even though it's gonna be virtual, is a great opportunity mm-hmm. for those that are in our, com- in our community to understand more about African-American history and, and how um, the great events that you have scheduled, and I'm happy to hear that that reading is gonna take place, mm-hmm. that'll give some insight. Um, because of course I, I, I know that one liner. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. As a matter of fact, I remember communicating with someone on social media uh, after I actually posted uh, that that particular line from the speech. 
And they, um, actually I posted the entire speech and um, this person thought that it, they didn't realize it was a Martin Luther King Jr. speech and thought it was something that was just written until they got to the end. And, you know, that's a powerful, um, you know, uh, concept right there that it, the, what's in it is relevant right now, you know, yes. even though this was written in 1968. So uh, I'm, I'm pleased to be able to share that. And I think it just offers some insight to people who may not quite get it. And, you know, maybe they won't get it, but I think the conversations are being had. And that's one thing that the museum is committed to. Our vision is to, to encourage those conversations, that reflection, that engagement, so that we can uh, be able to unravel and and um, and take apart some of the uh, misperceptions and 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 honestly the the lies that have been perpetuated throughout history, so that people can really begin to see um, why why we are where we're at right now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, again, I just really appreciate that there will be some virtual programming for people to see. Now, I know that the museum, museums throughout the state of Iowa, the governor has kind of lightened up some of the restrictions for you all, mm -hmm. but the yes. African American Museum has, um, hasn't quite opened up to the public fully. Uh, mm -hmm. What are some of your plans there so that we can look forward to opportunity to come into the African American Museum in Cedar Rapids? Absolutely, yeah, you know, we're really grateful that um, the governor has re lifted those restrictions. Um, and we are, um, you know, solidifying our plans right now. As I said before, we were immediately um, working to adapt our programming, um, but also we want to make sure that um, all safety precautions are in place. And I know that my uh, colleagues across the city and across the state are doing the same thing. Um, and so, you know, we are putting our guidelines in place and we want to make sure um, that we are able to communicate what those measures are long before people come back into our building. So we are scheduled right now to reopen on July 10th, which is a Friday, and we'll have limited hours just Friday and Saturday, Friday from noon to 6 p.m. and then Saturday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And we'll do that for a little while. We don't have an end date for those reduced hours, but we think we'll kind of, you know, take things um, day by day and or week by week and see how it goes in terms of people's comfort level to mm -hmm. gather. Uh, we'll definitely be in putting in place our um, limited capacity, um, social distancing, of course, and require masks uh, uh, for folks when they come in. So. We are putting our plans together. We're excited about reopening, but again, people have really embraced our digital virtual um, programming, um, but we don't want people to feel like they don't need to come in because we have a lot of content that, um, you know, that being in person will uh, make make such an impact to be able to see uh, some of the um, items, our panels and our, our, our archives. So we're excited to have that happen, but we are putting safety first and making sure that we're able to adequately um, uh, communicate that plan. But I will say that our opening the schedule on July 10th includes a Smithsonian traveling exhibit um, that's in conjunction with the Czech village in New Bohemia Main Street District. It's called Voices and Votes and is about democracy. And so okay. that'll go through August 15th. And then we will spend about three to four weeks getting our own exhibit, uh, temporary exhibit up. Ironically enough, we've been working on this exhibit for over a year, but it's um, about modern protest. Who would have thought that here we are soon to be opening a, an exhibit on protest when we're in the midst of one a uh, huge movement right now. So that exhibit that will open in September is called um, Unwavering, the 20, 21st Century Activism. So it'll explore these uh, movements um, uh, from the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, current movements um, that include Black Lives Matter and Me Too movement. So we're really, um, I guess, I don't know if excited is the right word, but we're really, um, we really are pleased to be able to share uh, some of these uh, historical movements and how we've adjusted and adapted uh, from protests back in the day to protests now and what it looks like, what the similarities are, what the differences are. Um, and I think the timing um, is going to be good because people are looking for answers and I'm hoping we'll be able to share and provide yeah. insight. Yeah, and you're talking about unwavering, you know, mm -hmm. to ensure that we get where we are. And I see the picture in the background of Rosa mm -hmm. Parks mm -hmm. and the, the boycott that took place. Th that was unwavering where Yep. It was so necessary to ensure that the entire nation knew what was being, what was happening to black people and they're not being legally, you know, able to sit in the front of the bus. And mm -hmm. so Rosa Parks was the one that sat down and we all stood up after that to make sure. Right. And, and so it, it, we know that um, George Floyd was, was that person that, in, in, that has caused our entire nation 
to mm-hmm. once again, you know, hear the voices of black people and ensure that yes. we don't continue down this road anymore, that we can't take it anymore. That's the mm-hmm. message. We're, we're done, right? <laughs> Yes, absolutely. You know, and I, you know, I just re, uh, over the weekend released our, the museum's public statement. You know, that was something that a lot of folks were doing, organizations were doing that right away immediately. And, you know, I felt this conviction to make sure I got it right and not just not rush to get it out there. But, you know, something that I, you know, the, the, the Black Lives Matter movement has been met with the All Lives Matter. And, you know, the one thing that I wanted to make clear in my statement was that, you know, until uh, all lives don't matter until Black Lives Matter, and that's important. And I think it's been well received. Uh, and you know, this just dismantling some of the some of the biases and and, and preconceived notions and uh, all of the information that's been uh, you know just not not shared accurately and truthfully. And now that we have uh, folks who are willing to uh, record uh, and show showcase what's happening, people are starting to to wake up, and we, we need to have that. Yes, well, we have a long journey ahead of us, but one mm-hmm. that we will be uncompromising in. And, and you know, and, and I think that the nation and all of our, um, the, the black people within our, within our nation, as well as white allies are saying enough is enough. And we're, we're gonna have to figure this out and we're gonna have to figure it out now. So I really appreciate again, um, you coming on, I think it's great um, to talk about the African American Museum, not only for June 19th, uh, for Juneteenth, but also in light of mm-hmm. what our nation is facing right now. So thank you so much for joining me today. Is there anything else you would like to share with us? Well, donations, do donations. Thank you. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> well, I want to say thank you so much for having me on and to, to be able to share what we're doing for Juneteenth. I will say that all details about our celebration can be found on our website at blackiowa.org or on our social media platforms, including Facebook, uh, Snapchat, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, you can easily find those information. I hope the people will go and at least check interested so they will get alerts. Um, and if there is interest in making contributions, uh, you can also find those, uh, those links on our website at blackiowa.org. Thank you so much. And we'll see you at one of those virtual events. Awesome, thank you so much. Thank you. You take care. That's our show for today. We'll be back again soon with another episode of Community Connection. Until then, remember we're all in this together and Black Lives Matter.